Welcome again. Today we outline the processes and consequences of soil degradation. We outline soil conservation methods. We evaluate soil management strategies in the Great Plains of North America and at the lowest plateau in China. The soil itself is a precious non-renewable resource for it takes hundreds, sometimes thousands of years for weathering and erosion to give rise to soil from bare rock. Perhaps the richest soil on the planet is loess, a sedimentary soil formed from glacier movement and wind action. Glaciers grind rock and the ground particulate matter is taken by wind thousands of kilometers away to be deposited as a deep and fertile loess. It is this type of soil that is present in the Great Plains of North America and in the Pampas of Argentina, the steppes of Russia, and also in the Loess Plateau of China. The soil itself is subject to many natural forces of erosion. Intense rainfall is one such force. Some soils have a greater tendency to erode or a high erosivity. Depending upon the soil type and the vegetative cover, soils also have different rates of penetration or infiltration. The less the infiltration, the less the water holding capacity of the soil and the more will be the rate of runoff and the likelihood of erosion. The extent of any slopes is also another factor that affects the erosion of soils. Human intervention is perhaps the most significant cause of soil degradation. Here we can see slash and burn happening on the hillsides as the soil cover is removed, exposing the soil to tilling for cultivation and then owing to the steepness of this slope to a very quick erosion of the precious topsoil, only encouraging the farmers to move to other areas of the hillside as their productivity quickly declines. It is unsustainable agriculture of this kind that presents the greatest threat to the soil. Another significant threat to soils, especially tropical rainforest soil, is deforestation and overgrazing. Rainforest soil itself is very thin, and if it is cleared, the large roots that prevent runoff are not present. And if overgrazing happens on fields that are cleared, then whatever cover there is, is quickly removed. These kinds of unsustainable practices quickly lead to soil depletion and pictures like this. Another threat to soil comes from excessive irrigation, particularly in regions starved of natural rainfall. The water that is used for irrigation brings with it various chemicals which collect in the soil after repeated irrigation, leading to toxic conditions for plants and overall very salty conditions in the soil. With so many threats to this precious and limited resource, it is important that we employ a range of strategies to manage and to conserve soils. One such strategy 
is crop rotation. Changing the crops that are grown in a given location allows for some reprieve as certain crops only extract certain kinds of nutrients. If farmers rotate what's grown on a given area each year, the rate of depletion is reduced. In addition, there are certain kinds of crops which are capable of enriching the soil with nitrates. And crop rotation systems usually rotate with one leguminous plant going through the cycle. Examples of legumes include peas and beans. Mulching is another simple yet effective tool in protecting the soil from the agents of weathering, from the harsh rainfall, from runoff, and from the wind. In addition, it also helps the soil to retain moisture. Contour plowing or growing crops along the natural contours. This practice helps in reducing the runoff and the erosion. Strip farming also has a similar effect as different kinds of crops with different root systems and growth patterns interrupt the flow of water and in so doing reduces erosion. Terracing is another powerful means of reducing soil erosion on steep slopes. Windbreaks. The cultivation of certain kinds of plants reduces the effect of strong winds. Sometimes soils become acidified and this provides a niche for certain kinds of pests and for the leaching of certain ions, liming the soil by the addition of soil conditioners like calcium carbonate helps to reverse the acidity by raising the soil pH. Free-range farming or allowing animals to graze on pasture quickly depletes the soil as like goats can pull grasses out from their very roots and this would allow for rapid depletion of topsoil where possible if these animals are raised in pens, it can go a long way towards conserving the soil. Here in Manitoba, Canada, just one portion of the most productive lowest deposit on the planet, the Great Plains of North America. Many of these practices are in use. Strategies such as windbreaks, strip farming, contour plowing, and mulching are widely used. But in recent times, the zero-till method has been gaining in popularity throughout the Great Plains of North America. The zero-till method is exactly as its name suggests, allowing the soil the freedom from the rigors of tilling on an annual basis. This need to mix the soil to ensure the release of nutrients for crops is also a source of its depletion. The idea that soils can be protected from this depletion by not tilling may not be suited to all areas. In addition, the benefit of the zero-till system is that it allows the soil to be used in a sustainable manner, meaning that the precious resource is conserved for the benefit of the current generations and for many generations to come. Another strategy being employed in the Great Plains is the use of genetically modified crops. Crops that require less irrigation, less fertilizer, and produce greater yield. While the benefits of such crops are immediately obvious, there are some concerns of the effects of GM crops on human health 
and the environment. China's Loess Plateau is another area well known for its rich soil and great productivity. But unlike the Great Plains of North America, this area became the subject of rapid soil depletion and over the last hundred years or so, the people of the Loess Plateau have been trying to eke out a subsistence lifestyle, merely trying to obtain food to sustain themselves and their families. And owing to the poor management of this area, they have found this task to be increasingly difficult. The Loess Plateau in China is undoubtedly the most startling case of soil depletion. A rich and productive region, completely stripped of its vegetation and rich soil due to poor soil management practices. It is only in recent years that some soil management has been brought to the area. Strategies like terracing have been bringing success and the lowest plateau is a classic case study in environmental management. Before moving further, it is useful to click here and have a look at the one-hour video on the Loess Plateau. The main reason for the degradation of the Loess Plateau was the lack of awareness, which brought with it destructive agricultural practices, the cultivation on the hillsides, and the herding of sheep and goats. When crops failed, there was even more herding of the sheep and the goats. All of this led to rapid erosion, topsoil loss, and with the loss of vegetation, low infiltration, and no water was retained in the soil, leading to rapid runoff and to flooding. With no infiltration and rapid runoff, there was eventually drought. Some other effects included sedimentation of the Yellow River, eutrophication, and then, of course, dust storms, as the once productive plateau was transformed into barren desert. The depletion of the soil in the Loess Plateau provides an example of a positive feedback cycle of poverty and ecological destruction showing how societies and the environment are inextricably interconnected, with the poverty leading to soil erosion and the soil erosion leading to flooding and drought, which in turn led to famine and to even more poverty, leading to even more unsustainable use of the soil. And so the cycle went on until the plateau was transformed into a barren desert. The task of reversing desertification of the Loess Plateau seemed an almost impossible one. But with successful environmental management practices, the subsistence farmers of the Loess Plateau were not only able to provide for themselves, but in time were able to provide commercial yields. While there was the input from the outside of financial resources and technical expertise, the success could not have come without the involvement and the participation of the local people. GIS was used to map the plateau. Hills with slopes greater than 25 degrees received no cultivation because productivity in these areas was deemed to be less than the loss of ecosystem function. There were bans on free-ranging of animals and tree cutting, pen feeding for animals, tree planting, but most significantly, people were given ownership of the terraces and because of the injection of capital, they were paid for their work. The land was divided with transparency so that the people who participated felt that they were being treated fairly and each village was given the same 
treatment as every other village in the region. Several of the principles of good environmental management. Principles such as the people's participation, the need for transparency, and for equity among all of the villages. There was also the need to have technical knowledge from the outside and to mix this technical know-how with input from the local people. A most significant aspect, however, was the need to have an initial injection of capital. With all of these in place, the formula was set to lower the levels of poverty. And along with this lowering of poverty was an increase in soil fertility. And this increase in soil fertility only serves to further lessen the extent of people's suffering. Another example of positive feedback.